What's up everyone, thank you for checking this video and welcome to this quick overview of the new computer that I recently built in order to replace my working machine. You may or may not know that I'm mostly a developer. I do also design and of course video editing for this YouTube channel, but my 90% of the day it's spent coding, compiling, building code and all this good stuff. So I need a computer that it's mostly CPU related, that with a CPU very powerful, that can handle heavy load and it's pretty fast because up until now I've been using a three-ish years old computer with an i7-7700 and sometimes it takes like 45 minutes to build some the Firefox source code or other things like it's it's starting to show his ears and it's getting really really slow so in this video I'm gonna show you the selection process of all the components that I decided to pick in order to build my new Linux PC and uh, a couple of shortcomings that I encountered and a quick overview of the performance and temperature of this new wonderful machine which by the way it's right behind me is this little black box and it's super stealthy and super quiet so it's gonna be awesome So first of all I decided to pick the case because from the case then all the other components are pretty uh, it's pretty easy to pick them because the case gives you the uh, size constraint and all the specification that you can use in order to pick the other components and I wanted my case to be very small on top of the desk I don't want a massive tower on the ground I want everything like a super small fun factor so I went with the N case M1 and just as a side note I'm using my tablet to read all the information here because otherwise I wouldn't be able to make this video mispronouncing or forgetting all the names and codes and all these PC parts have very stupid names sometimes. But anyway, the case is the N-Case M1. This is the version 6 of this case which was built, if I'm not wrong, originally by a couple of friends from Taiwan and it seems that this is built and actually uh, created in the Lian Li factory. So the build quality, it's amazing, top notch. It's a super modular, small foam factor PC entirely built in aluminum. All the panels are removable without any screws. They are all just connected with this small metal pin that you can pop out and pop in and it's super satisfying to do. There are a couple of dust filter at the side and the bottom, they're all magnetic, no screws necessary. You can basically deconstruct the entire case by removing a bunch of screws and you can pretty much open it up everything and have only the frame around in order to give you plenty of space to build everything you want in this super tight computer, which is not really, really tight. It just fits a lot of things, but in a compact space with great cooling capability. For the processor I went with the AMD 5950X and this beast doesn't need any introduction. It's a 16 core, 32 threads, almost um, cannot be found <laughs> anywhere. I was lucky enough to purchase it. I did a back order at a shop, at a computer shop close to my place and after a couple of days I received it and I've been super stoked because it's yeah, it's, it, it seems that scalpers are buying all these high-end components. It's pretty, it's pretty impossible to find it, but yeah, I'm super excited. For the motherboard, I went with the Asus Crosshair 8 Impact. This is an X57 motherboard that I picked specifically for a bunch of different reasons. First of all, this is a mini DTX motherboard. It's not a mini ITX. The DTX has basically is a little bit taller because it uses the extra space that usually it's behind the uh, graphics graphics card underneath the PCIe Express for the graphics card and luckily the NKZ M1 fits DTX motherboards but uh, the majority of these small form factor cases don't fit motherboards larger than mini ITX so if you want to check the DTX be sure that your case supports it but I went with this also because as of today I think this is the only small motherboard that comes with a header for the USB type C which the NKZ M1 has it in the front panel and I wanted to use it because I have a couple of dongles and I use it for that reason. The other reason is because this motherboard comes with a BIOS flash updater that is directly hardware like you don't need any software to update the BIOS you can just put the new BIOS in the USB plug it in the back where the IO shield is indicated the USB port with the proper BIOS click the BIOS update button 
wait a couple of seconds for the blinking light and everything it's okay and I decided to do it because I knew the most recent 5000 series MD is not 100% compatible with the uh, X570 motherboards that were released a couple of months prior the new CPU release so I needed to do a BIOS update which I did because otherwise the system wouldn't boot and I didn't want to use another CPU just to swap it, update the BIOS and then change it again, just build and then disassemble the uh, computer. I didn't want to do it, so I did everything with the USB and this motherboard was the perfect choice. And it comes also with an SO DIMM slot, which allows you to install two M.2 NVMe drives, which is fantastic. Speaking of drives, I went with the very famous Sabrent Rocket 1TB NVMe. I went with two of these, so I have two terabyte full of storage and PCIe 4 M.2, M super fast, nothing extra to say. For memory, I decided to go with 32 gigabytes of the Corsair Vengeance. These are DDR4 36 megahertz memory slots. I could have gone with the 4000 megahertz, but I read some uh, contrasting reviews. Some say it's stable enough, some say it's not really stable, but the Delta of performance improvements between the 3600 megahertz and 4000 megahertz is not that wide to justify the spike on price, the price differences. So I went with a more stable and more reliable 3600 megahertz, which is super, super fast. As a power supply, I decided to, of course, not cheap out because these are high-end components and if something goes wrong in the power supply, it just burns the entire system. I went with the Corsair SFX 750 watt 80 plus platinum. This is also fully modular, which allowed me to only plug the cables that I actually need in my system and not had to manage extra cable that I need to tuck in some weird space and handle the cable management. So the full modularity of these SFX, it's fantastic. For graphics card, I went with the Gigabyte RX 5700 XT. And I know this is kind of like the black sheep of the whole system because this is the oldest part of the oldest components of all the one that I picked, but not really. This is actually the Revision 2, which was released in September. So it's actually a three, four months old. Um, and it's plenty for me. I'm a casual gamer at most. I mostly play once a month or once every two months. I don't have much time to play games and I get bored pretty easily. I don't like FPS, uh, quick pace games. I really like small, uh, slow RPG indie strategy games that sort of stuff so this type of graphics card it's plenty for my needs and i don't need to deal with uh, weird incompatibility with uh, linux drivers and stuff like that especially because the 5700 has been out for more than a year all the quirkiness and all the driver issues for Linux have been solved. So I didn't need to do anything crazy. I didn't need to tweak the kernel and install proprietary drivers. Everything worked out of the box. In terms of cooling, against the recommendation of a lot of people, I went full on with air cooling. I didn't want to deal with liquid cooling because I never used liquid cooling and I was a little bit concerned about uh, coil noise or like pump noise, all the usual things that you have in the liquid cooling. And I know that this, the, the main thing is that if your liquid cooler fails, you don't know it. You really don't see it until your computer shuts down and maybe you burn your CPU because it's overheating. But if your hair cooler fails, you just can't see it immediately. Your fan stops spinning. You can check in your uh, fan speed settings if something goes wrong. So it's easier to um, troubleshoot and it's easier to replace a broken fan instead of a broken pump. I decided to go full on Noctua. I'm a Noctua fanboy. And because Noctua finally released pretty much all their components in the Chromax black variation, I went full on black and it's fantastic, super stealthy. For the CPU, I went with the NHU9F, which is a super small cooler, but allows me to have two fans in a push-pull configuration. And with the side fan on the case, I can create a sort of these air tunnel with the air, fresh air coming in from the side with the dust filter and then getting ejected from the back. So it's a constant, continuous circulation that hopefully will do the trick and I won't need liquid cooling to handle the 
uh, toastiness of the 5950X. The building process was super easy actually. I enjoyed it building, even if the case is very small, I was expecting to struggle with cables and struggle with components and pushing and scraping all these other things that I experienced in the past with very small cases. But the NKS M1, it's fantastic. You can remove all the screws, you can disassemble it as much as you want and have plenty of room to fit all your components or at least all the components that I picked. The cable management is not the best. There are a couple of areas where you can tuck your cables, like there's a gap in the front or there's the area underneath the PSU behind the graphics card. I didn't wanna cramp all the cables in front of the PSU because I need that area as clear as possible in order to allow better airflow. And I also disable the RGBs because apparently today it's pretty impossible to find uh, any components without any RGB, but I disable them all in the BIOS. The only RGB left is the actual gigabyte logo of the graphics card, but it's, it's very minor and it's kind of hidden behind the grid side panel of the case. So I'm good with that. Overall, the system on idle, it's super quiet and actually it's on right now because the screen is on. So can you hear anything? There's nothing. After building the computer, I decided to use it immediately. I decided to set up my development environment with all my software, all my things, and I started using it. I didn't want to tweak it too much. I didn't want to spend too much time in overclocking or undervolting or checking the temperatures and stuff like that because I just wanted to see how it performs on my daily task, how it feels when I use it. And I was super impressed. I did a couple of super quick benchmarks just to give you an overview of the overall performance. I used the Foronix test suite in uh, Pop! OS 2004 just because I'm not good with benchmarking, like I don't know what are the proper software to use, so I decided to go with a pre-built solution and these are a couple of tests that I run. I ran a couple of Blender tests, full on CPU, I didn't test the GPU because as I said I'm not very concerned about it and I ran the Blender BMW which took 78 seconds, the Fishy Cat render which took 102 seconds, and then I ran a couple of building processes. I built the Apache server in 17 seconds, and then the entire Linux kernel in just 46 seconds, which was incredible. In terms of temperature, the constant temperature, the highest one that was keeping constant during all these tests that were run one after another for one hour was around 78 degrees. The maximum temperature that I reached was 85, but those 85 spikes happen only for a split second, like before running a test or after switching a test to another or preparing something. It never idle or never stayed up at 85. It was spiking 85 and going back immediately at 72 and then slowly building up to 78 and then keeping it steady at 78, which is very good. And the overall noise level never went over 55 decibels. Usually it's around 40 to 45 decibels when the whole CPU is a full max and 100% and all the fans are spinning super fast. The max noise level is 55, which is absolutely manageable. It's not noisy, it's not annoying. There's only one little thing about the motherboard that I wish I could change. The fact that the chipset of the motherboard are cooled by built-in fans. And these fans are very, very tiny, are very small. So even if they're quiet, there's this constant tiny, tiny whining that is not really noticeable at all unless you really stick your ear there and you just focus on trying to discern this sound from the regular uh, hair flow of the, the other fans. But the fact that I can pick it up, I'm starting to just, like my ear goes there, my brain immediately goes there looking for that sound or searching that sound. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but that's, I, I would like to change maybe it, the, the design could be changed a little bit and the could be used one larger fan to avoid these tiny, tiny whining noise, but it's just a minor detail that it's not, it's not annoying at all. But that's pretty much it. Let me know what do you think about this list of components. And uh, I'm thinking to do some more heavy benchmarking, some thorough benchmarking. I also purchased the Kraken X53, the liquid cooler, because I wasn't sure that my air cooling solution was going to be good enough, but it seems to be. But 
I'm thinking maybe in a couple of weeks after I stabilize my system and I use it for uh, an extended period of times, so like for hours and hours of compiling and I see the temperature, I can use those data and then swap with the liquid cooling and rerun all those tests and use it for another uh, another couple of weeks with the liquid cooling and see the major differences. So I'm thinking to do an extra video about pure performance and temperature tests for both CPU and GPU. But as I said, the GPU is one year old, so you, I'm not sure I can bring any benefit in reviewing something that has been reviewed many, many times for from people way more experienced than me. But as usual, let me know in the comments below what do you think, what do you like to see if you want me to run some specific test or if you wanna see some more software related approach or what I did, how, what type of kernel I'm using and all these kind of extra things. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe and click that annoying bell that gives you an alert when a new video is uploaded because apparently if you don't do that, YouTube completely ignores you, but who cares? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I don't care. I'm doing this because I like it. I don't, just, it's fine. Just, okay, that's it. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and until the next one, as usual, happy coding and stay safe.